28. Oktober. Oktober the 28th. Manchmal ist es anstrengend. Sometimes it's exhausting trying to find an inner balance. Normal life can be exhausting. Listening to people talk about petty things like they're important. I could scream, but what good would that do? It's like jumping back and forth between two worlds. Of course, it's okay to enjoy yourself and just tune out. But dealing with life and death, you have to process it. You can't just shut it off. November the 4th. Every time I come to the hospice, I'm filled with a kind of joy. It's not that easy to talk about with just anybody. It's not that I'm drowning in infinite sadness when I'm alone, but I do think about it a lot. I think I find positive energy in difficult situations as well as in happy ones. Barbara always says, how nice that you're here. And every time I think to myself, how nice that I get to be here. Hi, I'm Johanna, one of the new presenters for the Vidi Air Show 21 Grams. So what does 21 Grams refer to? That's roughly how much the human soul might weigh. It's not scientifically proven, of course, but it leaves a lot of room for... For what? What does it leave room for? Oh, crap! <laughs> We want to make death less of a taboo. We want to talk with you about things people don't usually like to talk about. I'm a companion for the dying, which means that I'm always standing at the crossroads between life and death. I've been doing this for seven years now, and I have the feeling this work has brought way more intensity to how I'm living, because without death, there's no life. On top of that, I've also lost siblings, so death has always played a big role for me. And then with my grandfather, I was 11 when he died, and saw this decline of a really alive man who did so many things within just two months. I was there for all that, so that's been my experience with death so far. So you were at the funeral? I was at the funeral and I saw him for the last time. Two weeks before he died, I visited him for the last time. He was already pretty far gone. He'd regressed a lot, he talked about his mother, he didn't really recognize anyone anymore, but he was still alive and still present somehow. Grief helps us perceive feelings more clearly and sense more subtle nuances, because grief doesn't begin with the death of a person. Grief, just like death, is a fact of life that accompanies us. Just like I accompanied an eight-year-old girl who'd lost her 12-year-old sister to bone cancer. I joined the family right after the death. With Ella, I noticed that she was sometimes deeply sad for a moment, and then she was okay again. So we'd go back to playing. It's like she jumped from one pool of sadness to the next. And often it's the case with us adults that we sink into such a well of grief that we can't get out of it. We almost drown in it. I definitely noticed that that's a major difference between children and adults. <laughs> May the 1st. For a few weeks, I've been accompanying Mandy, who has a serious heart condition. Soon, she will die. She's on the waiting list for a hospice bed. I was wondering about your bucket list. I would have called it a wish list. Why do you call it a bucket list? Um, yeah, it's quite a funny story. I saw a movie once with two film stars who were in the hospital, and they said to themselves, Hey, I still have certain things that I would like to do or have fulfilled before I kick the bucket. And then it became so clear to me, a bucket list, wishes or things that I would still like to do before I kick the bucket. You have so many, 40 or 42, right? Wow. 
And all the ones that are circled, you've done those? Exactly. I fulfilled them or achieved them somehow. And it was funny in the beginning. When you think about it, what do you really want to do or experience in your life? There were a couple of things where I thought to myself, well, hello, this might be exactly what I want from life. For example, I'd like to eat fresh strawberries or fly. And I thought that would never really happen. Then suddenly I found myself sitting in an ultralight airplane and it was like, wow, because flying, it kind of means everything to me. Probably because I had a near-death experience, I felt this kind of freedom then too. I felt some of that again in this ultralight plane, just existing between heaven and earth. That was really fascinating for me. And when did you start writing all that down? Almost immediately after my last surgery, which was when I decided not to undergo any more surgeries. That was a very major operation where they had to defibrillate me four times. And it became very clear to me, like, no, I've had a total of 11 life-saving heart interventions. That's enough. And in the same breath, so to speak, I decided to take this palliative route and also to pursue these wishes or bucket list of what I'd like to do. You said you've already had a near-death experience. What do you think happens after death? Well, I'm totally convinced that I know, because in this near-death experience, I didn't see a bright white tunnel like some people do. I saw myself dying from above. For me, it was completely bizarre because I could hear and feel this crazy alarm sound coming from the monitor and I could feel the nurse's fear. But at the same time, there was also complete stillness, total silence. So it was completely quiet and noisy at the same time. And there was also total peace. I noticed that I no longer had any questions. I also had this strange 360-degree view without having to move in any particular way. It became clear to me that, in the end, everything would be one. I noticed that, and then it was clear, well, hello, there you go. And my fear of death immediately vanished after this near-death experience. Funny, you take a bite and it's gone. Yes, it's gone. How about that? Well, I'd like to ride the roller coaster. Okay, but that's pretty cool too. April the 11th. I met Ella at a children's bereavement group I was leading. A few months before, her big sister died of bone cancer. She was only 12, and Ella is eight years old. Somehow we instantly clicked, and since then I have accompanied the family through their grief, joy, and anger. Tell me what you're planning. Yeah, okay. Um... So, I have my dissertation topic. I'm interested in the agency of terminally ill children, because I think that children aren't involved nearly enough in this whole process when it comes to therapy measures and just being included in the whole decision-making process. So I think you should definitely let the kids have their say. Of course, you could also consider the parents' perspective, how they're actually assessing how equipped their children are to decide on these issues. But the children should definitely be involved. You should ask about their opinions and wishes, and also about agency. But do you think that if I accompany different families for my doctoral thesis now for a few months or for a year, then I might get too many different perspectives? Because no two families are alike. Could I then somehow incorporate them all? Would that still be scientific enough? Yes, that's qualitative social research, really going into depth, not taking a broad approach. 
approach. And then it becomes less about having as many cases or families as possible, and more about looking at what are the very concrete, subjective issues that come up, and asking a terminally ill child these questions. And if you do that over a long period of time, you will need significantly fewer cases than if you were to just conduct a series of interviews. So I would first wait until you have the research design. Then you can look at the next step. How many families do you need to answer your questions? That will be decisive. June the 15th. The thing for me that's still inexplicable is how the time I spend in the hospice is imbued with a melodic, almost gentle rhythm of life, whether adagio or presto, minor or major. Everything's held together by a structure. Everything interacts with everything else. It's like values are redefined. I'm increasingly aware of the emotional depth that's anchored both in the ward itself and in its inhabitants. I feel very, very comfortable here. I just have to say that all the fears I had are just gone. Although I can't say exactly why, I simply feel comfortable here and feel like I'm in good hands. I never used to feel this way. It's irrelevant whether I still have three months or live another two years. It's just not important. I'm enjoying this time that I have now, like this. It's beautiful because all the things that I have suffered in my past don't matter anymore. How was it for you to grow up in an orphanage? It shaped me a lot. For example, because of that experience, I did not want to come here. I didn't want to come to this hospice. Life isn't very easy, is it? For you, there's still much ahead of you. You don't even know it yet. So that's something else that's good for me. There's not much that can happen to me anymore. Are you afraid of death? Because it doesn't sound like it. No, not at all. Especially since I was told that my death would be simply losing my strength, losing the desire to do anything. That it would be like slowly saying goodbye to life and falling asleep. And I will not resist this. I think that death comes when it's supposed to come, and that is quite reassuring to me. August the 21st. What matters to me personally is supporting the people here and making their lives more beautiful. I want to put a smile on their faces and enjoy life with them to the fullest, or as much as possible. Life is so precious and we only get one. Even if you know that it could all be over soon, you should still make every moment an unforgettable one. Maybe I'm taking on a bit too much. But that's my goal, and you should always have a goal. So I think these need to go. Yes, I had the same thought when I saw that. It somehow doesn't fit at all. Where do these blobs come from? That's better. There's only the pink one here now. For me, that's a little too... 
zu wenig doesn't stand out enough. Exactly. So we're looking at layering it like this. Yes, okay. It matches, looks good. Very good. Yes, great. And then I would say, let's talk about the back cover text next. We can think about the design of the back cover too. Then maybe we can look at the whole. In this paragraph, it's important to me that these 10 insights come across even stronger. Diese, diese zehn Einsichten noch stärker It's what the book's about. zu tragen kommen. Mm -hmm. okay. Also die, die, das, was, was das Buch so an ähm, It's not just aimed at the people dealing with death. Richtet, äh, sondern wo man wirklich sagen kann, Because, da kann ich, oder as you sagst, always so put it so beautifully, die, people who are dealing with death don't need to take a mindfulness ja. course. Ja. Ja. Also das ist ja das, äh, I don't want to write this book only for people who are confronting death right now, but for everyone, because this is a subject that affects us all. We'll all die at some point, and that's why it's so important to somehow deal with the subject beforehand. When death eventually happens, it won't be as difficult to manage. Hi. Hi, Wendy. I've brought strawberries. Hey, cool. That's totally sweet of you. Well, after all, it's on your bucket list. Yes. They're fresh from Brandenburg. They look really fresh too. Thank you very much. Do you want one right now? I'd love one. Great. I've got to say, I haven't eaten strawberries for ages. Yes, that was a great idea of yours. My pleasure. Please eat, there are still plenty. Yes, that's great. I always loved them as a child too. My grandmother had a huge garden back then, and probably a third of it was filled with strawberries and currants, things like that, and I was just really present. Whenever I was there, you'd only find me in the garden. <laughs> so it also has a lot to do with your childhood, right? Strawberries? So do you want people to eat strawberries at your funeral? Or don't you really think about it? Some people really like things like that. For example, I could totally imagine people drinking coffee at my funeral. I think that's kind of cool, because I also like to drink coffee all the time. I'll be downstairs in the studio too. You can drink something. There's still some time. I'm not quite sure about it. Usually I don't wear black eye makeup. Should I take some off again? Is that okay? Of course. Very cool. It's somehow much smaller than I expected. He looks so much bigger on TV. Why would a 27-year-old accompany the dying? I get that question fairly often, and I always think to myself, why wouldn't I? Why is this seen as something that's so peculiar? Yes, it's something that everyone finds so difficult, and they say, hey, why are you doing this? Why are you dealing with such a heavy subject at such a young age? And for me, it doesn't feel heavy. For me, it's more a question of why isn't this a normal thing for us to do? That's something I just don't get. For me, it's this depth, this depth of relationships, and this emptiness, and just being in this pure existence. I think that's what makes me feel even more alive. Ja, fast, fast. Ja, knapp, sei knapp. Ich hab, ich hab diese, aber das, das klingt jetzt ganz anders. Ja, er ist kleiner. Oh, 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 o
There's so much cauliflower. I don't know what to do with so much cauliflower. I think I totally overestimated it. Well, OK, no stress. Yeah. May the 19th. He passed away. They said he went peacefully in his sleep. I know it must have been a relief for him to finally go, but it still hurts. I got to visit with him four times. His eyes were always shining until he couldn't open them anymore. Then he was just sleeping. Only later did I realize how much these meetings had changed me. The interplay of life and death accompanies us every day, but we don't want to acknowledge it, unless death directly affects us or someone in our family. His sister's words still ring in my ears. He was never afraid of death. He was only afraid of life. Voila. Here you go. Thanks. Have a good flight. For 14. OK. And then please check in with Miss Vitsky in room 13 to see if she's ready. Hello. Hello, I'm bringing you lunch. This looks delicious, Mrs. Shiva. Oh, my God. It always looks delicious. This is fantastic, right? Wow. Just great. I had hoped for this. So you requested asparagus with potatoes and ham? Yes, because I don't eat fish and today's Friday. Right, it smelled like fish, didn't it? And I was like, yuck. Yes, that's much better. Now let's turn this towards me, then I can eat it. Everything is there. My milk is there, so everything is good. We've got everything. Yes, of course, good. Thank you. Bon appétit. See you later. Bye. 18th November. November the 18th. Every now and then I experience moments of doubt, even though I'm certain that I've found my life's calling, working in a hospice. There are also times when I feel pushed to my limit. I wonder if I can really do this, accompany people on their journey. Well, we're christening the book. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> September the 6th. From time to time, when I forget to wear my name tag, people ask me how long I have been a patient here. Of course, it's my own fault, because I deliberately shave my hair. I'd been thinking of shaving my hair down to three millimeters for a while. Now that I've actually done it, I feel a lot more feminine than I did before, simply because it feels so much more comfortable. Maybe I'm always looking to do something extreme. April the 15th, a musical afternoon in the hospice. The ear is the last sensory organ to stop functioning. Apart from that, music transports so much more than just a few notes. It's beautiful to see when it unblocks something in a person's mind and causes memories to come flooding back. The moon, it looks great, wow. The star of Nazareth, and now look up. May the 13th, she was asleep. I sat down with her intuitively and started to speak, unsure if she could hear me or not. I took her hands and started to cry. I could not understand how such a special person could be destroyed by this disease. Then the corners of her mouth turned up and she pressed my hands tightly to her heart. I can't remember a moment in my life that was as full of warmth, love and energy as this one. Ella, let's hug a tree. And? It feels funny. You think so? I really like it. It's so calming. Say, what do you think about us screaming for a little bit? Why? Well, then you can just let it all out a bit. 
Let what out? Maybe all the anger or sadness or even just if you're really happy. Because sometimes it's just nice to scream. OK. But then you also have to join in.